able to offer leadership and guidance in all aspects of the authority's operation, be it with external stakeholders or internally. Additional achievements of the outgoing board includes the Rural Access Roads Program, of which construction for access roads to schools and clinics in Omusati region has been completed. The outgoing board has further opened NATO centers in Omuthia, Arandas, Divundu, Okongo and Hentis Bay, which will enable online NATO services. This is my favorite gear, because it speaks for me and all my brothers. Nivea Men Black and White Deal. With five times deal action to protect you and your favorite gear from stains. Try Nivea's number one anti-stain deodorant. Nivea Men, it starts with you. Okay, it's abandonment issues. Is it look? I'm going to do this for Ek probeer so hard om my kind gelukkig te maak, maar ek krijg net nie reg nie. Probeer net help dis al. Jy doen niks sonder bymotiewe nie. So jy hou van die tattoo? Nee, maar jy kan nie liefde koop nie. En beslis die myne nie. Jou regular? Am I that predictable? Jy is een gereelde klant en ons net soveel manier om koffie te drink. How do you like your coffee? Gewoonlik swaar sonder suiker. Does black and bitter only pertain to your coffee preference? I go man it's fun my coffee is on her milk. We're gonna have to pull rocks on our two claws of eye. That was a part of my plan. What? On my tips it marks so that you can win. I'm terrible at putt putt. A patient currently recovering at a local hospital following his ordeal with COVID-19 expressed his gratitude towards the frontline workers who assisted him when he got diagnosed with COVID-19 and ended up in the ICU with complications. Clive Kambangarera notes that frontline workers are not recognized enough during these pandemics as according to him, they are the ones who are at work every day looking after those who are sick and have to be strong for everyone during these difficult moments. These are the sentiments of a recovering patient who has survived the coronavirus and says it was not easy and frontline workers should get the recognition now because they are doing miracles during the pandemic. One important thing that has been um, that has been in the background of this whole COVID situation in our country is that uh, uh, the frontline workers are not given uh, not even recognition. They are not seen at all. We we hear reports every day from the Ministry of uh, uh, Health uh, about recoveries. A lot of these recoveries are taking place at home, but a lot of the serious cases. Are recoveries that are taking place at hospitals and people at hospitals are not recovering on their own. Um, they've got these people who are working 24-7 continuously looking after these people and making sure that people get stronger again from emotional point to physical and they take care of everything and uh, they make sure that people are strong enough to be able to go home and we forget one thing they are human they get covered, their families get covered, they lose family and friends to covered, and yet we expect them to keep going and just keep going. Um, some patients, we show up here, very difficult patients, and still these people would hold our hands. They would go through the most difficult times with us until the time that we heal, we leave the hospitals and we go on with our lives and they keep fighting for other people. So for me, it's, it's, it's quite important that uh, they are recognized, that they are seen, because these are the true heroes right now. These are the people that are keeping us alive for our families so that we can continue our lives. Um, and that's why for me, um, the small gesture that I show to the guys, especially in the, in the ICU ward, 
It's a very small token just to show them that um, I wish I could do more, but it's just a small token to show them that they are seen, we know they are there, and we truly appreciate what they are doing. And without them, this, this, this would have been a much bigger disaster. Local florist Cory Duplessis, the founder of Fabulous Flowers, say that his client called him to assist in providing the workers with a small token of appreciation for taking good care of him and wholeheartedly putting their lives at risk for others. Today we are here at MediClinic to celebrate our daily heroes. Our daily heroes being our first and frontline workers. One of my clients approached me earlier this month to say, you know what, he was recently diagnosed with COVID-19. Luckily, he's a survivor. And as a token of appreciation, he made little packages to say thank you and celebrating our frontline workers. We are at MediClinic today to celebrate those on the front line. Kombangarera say the gifts come from the deepest of his heart for all the staff and frontline workers, stressing that the virus is real and he would not like anyone to experience it. He further urges members of the public to adhere to the COVID-19 regulations to prevent them from ending up in the same situation. This morning woke up holding my head, hearing my heart beat all night long. Shades of this motel keeping me in bed, and reading the news just trying to stay strong. I need to just get up and take a deep breath, I keep it together, cause it's a beautiful day. Why do we do it? Cover up, tone down, hide, instead of choosing boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in with Nivea Rich Nourishing, our triple layered care of deep moisture serum, natural almond oil, and vitamin E. Enriches your skin for 48 hours. It's time to show off your best skin. Choose to wear your skin with pride every time with Nivea Rich Nourishing. What's up, world? This is Shay, the goddess of the airwaves on 99FM, Monday to Friday, serving you breakfast on the ignition between 6 and 9. We brought you to be inspired, taking you to master your destiny. Now it's time to do the work. Just show up. Put on your work boots and do the time. Make it and then make it better. Hello, world. It's your boy Script here on The Kingdom, where we're reminding you every single day. Get up. You've got this. Start where you are. Hey, hey, this is your girl Treza on Hitsbo on 99FM, letting you know it's okay. Try. Make mistakes. Awesome. I am Sibo and I'm going to be with you for quite a while. Thank you so much for joining us here on your inspiration station where we let you know. There's no easy money. There's no easy job. There's no easy life. 99FM. Do the work. Founded with the purpose to feed children living with disabilities, the Wolfish Bay Child and Family Center depends on funds generated from fruit and vegetables sold from their garden. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the center is experiencing financial difficulties and is calling on the public for support. Since 1995, the center has served as a beacon of hope for special needs children and young adults. Okay. 
They are taught basic skills and knowledge that would help them become positive contributors to society. The day begins with the most important meal, breakfast. Soon after, they move to different classrooms where they get therapy, stimulation and education. And the garden project starts 2013 and one of the companies, Manika Group, sent someone for us for the training of the garden. We have spinach in our garden, we are planting green peppers, onions, and then we are selling them. Some of the crops are some of the vegetables that we are giving to our children. Working in the garden is fun, says Christina Aces. She's been part of the staff for many years. Jennifer Lowe is a learner at the center. She enjoys watering the plants and harvesting crops. The Wolfish Bay Child and Family Center caters to about 150 learners. Its monthly expenses go as high as 85,000 Namibia dollars, which they say is difficult to maintain. BBC Smart Money program presents an exciting new technology segment dubbed Smart Tech. Ghana have a problem of unemployment, also the problem of housing and schools under trees. Now PLUS wants to use the problem of plastic waste so to solve the problem of schools under trees, housing and create more jobs for the youth in the country. Bonjour. Hello, I am Sao Duniang, director of the Palms Luxury Boutique Hotel in Dakar. I started by cleaning a toilet. Today, I am the manager of my own five-star hotel boutique with 60 employees. To give more people access to these life-saving vaccines, South Africa and India have proposed a waiver of COVID-19 patents. And the move seems to be gathering momentum after receiving the backing of the United States. But even if the patent waiver is indeed granted, can Africa manufacture these vaccines at scale? Did you know, COVID-19 vaccines may not only prevent you from getting seriously sick, vaccines allows your body to fight the virus well before an infection occurs. This greatly increases your chances of not getting seriously ill when infected. The government provides COVID-19 vaccines for free and they are safe for people aged 18 years and older, including those with pre-existing conditions. Remember. It is important to go for both doses of the vaccine to make sure you are fully protected. So, get vaccinated. Help kick COVID-19 out of Namibia. This message was brought to you by the Nationhood and National Pride Program in partnership with the Ministry of Health and Social Services. In other leading stories, German ambassador to Namibia, His Excellency Herbert Beck, 
has signed a funding agreement with representatives of Malta's Club Namibia. A total of just over 164,000 Namibia dollars was made available through the micro project fund of the embassy to support learners and unemployed youth. The project aims at improving academic performance, education standards and the development of young disadvantaged people. With the funds received, Malta's Club Namibia will purchase laptops, projectors and other ICT equipment in order to bring the necessary computer skills to young people across the country. The training is intended to prepare the youth for employment or to enhance their academic development in order to pursue possible further studies. The organization has designed a short syllabus for basic ICT knowledge to empower the youth on a personal as well as on a professional level. This program is designed as a mobile training unit traveling to remote parts of Namibia with the first location being Tsumkwe in the Otodondupa region. Maltese Club Namibia is a non-profit organization founded in 2016. It aims to provide entrepreneurial leadership skills to all students at Namibian institutions of high learning and to promote in improve and develop the interest in management and business topics. And Capricorn Group has announced that they have entered into an agreement with Cricket Namibia on becoming a main sponsor of women's cricket, focusing on the national women's team and the girls' festivals, tournaments and school league to develop girls' programs. The event took place at the Wanderers Sports Field where Cricket Namibia hosted a Capricorn Eagles franchise T20 competition. The Namibian national women's cricket team is now officially named the Capricorn Eagles. During the launch ceremony, Mudley's Hall, Capricorn Group's executive brand and corporate affairs thanked Johan Miller, CEO of Cricket Namibia, for the opportunity to collaborate. She handed over a cricket bat to symbolize the 150,000 Namibia dollar sponsorship. Capricorn Group indicated that they are proud to be part of Cricket Namibia, whose leadership has demonstrated passion and commitment to cricket development over the years. They hope that their support of women's cricket in Namibia will nurture the sport and increase female participation. In June this year, Capricorn Group and its subsidiary Capricorn Asset Management and Capricorn Private Wealth sent off the Namibian National Women's Cricket Team to the Women's Kwebuka Tournament, which took place in Kigali, Rwanda. The Capricorn Eagles had outstanding performances, making the Namibian nation proud with a 5 over 5 win. Stay true to who you are and stay true to Namibia Sounds. Starting September 4th at 7 p.m., Valentine's and 99FM bring you the True Music Sessions, a back-to-back -back playlist of our nation's finest artists brought to you by the finest blended scotch whiskey, Valentine's. Stay true. There's no wrong way. Joseph Schifrenny is standing by for today's edition of Business on One and Economic Indicators. Welcome to this evening's edition of Business on One. I'm Joseph Schifrenny. Motorists will from midnight pay more for fuel as prices will increase by 60 cents and 30 cents per litre for petrol and diesel respectively. The Ministry of Mines and Energy said despite this development, Namibian consumers still pay some of the lowest fuel pump prices per litre in the sub-Saharan African region. After leaving the prices for fuel unchanged for the month of August and covering the under-recoveries, not the same can be said for September 2021, as petrol will cost 40 Namibia dollars 15 cents per litre and diesel 30 Namibia dollars 88 cents per litre. The ministry took a decision not to make any adjustments to the pump prices for August. So this was done in the hope of stimulating the economy because when, when you adjust the, the fuel prices, it has a macroeconomic effect. 
So by keeping the fuel prices unchanged for August, uh, the ministry was hoping to stimulate the economy at the macroeconomic level. So uh, for moving into, into September, uh, the ministry have covered the entirety of the under recoveries for August. So moving into September, the ministry has now resolved to increase the petrol prices by 60 cents per liter and the diesel prices by 30 cents per liter. Abed Nego Katushi Ekanjo is the petroleum economist at the Mines and Energy Ministry. He assured Namibians that unlike neighboring countries, the government's control of the fuel prices has kept the full brunt of new fuel prices from affecting the pockets of consumers. Namibian consumers continue to pay some of the lowest prices in the sub-Saharan African region uh, because of the government's uh, ongoing and effective control of fuel prices. Uh, because the NEF obviously steps in from time to time uh, when there are volatilities in the prices of fuel to save the consumers. If you look at countries like South Africa, our neighbor, for example, uh, some of their levies in Texas are very high. Uh, and in South Africa, the full under recovery is passed on to the consumers. That's why in comparison to us, for example, uh, we are paying a lower price here. Uh, there are also countries that are landlocked, countries like Zambia, Zimbabwe, for example. Uh, because Namibia has a shoreline, it is easier for, it is, it is not costly for us uh, because we have access to the sea. Countries that are landlocked have to add on transportation, more transportation costs. To, to bring these, these products to their countries. Ekanjo also said the increase is attributed to the Namibia dollar depreciating against the U.S. dollar as well as a fall in the international prices for oil. We are sitting with under recoveries of 101 cents on petrol and 42 cents per litre on diesel. So we ascribe these under recoveries to the barrel prices, which although have decreased over the course of August 2021, uh, they are still high. So for example, on petrol, the barrel prices are decreased from 85 US dollars to 82 US dollars. Uh, this is still a high amount uh, in terms of the barrel prices. Uh, on diesel, we have seen the, the barrel prices decreasing from 79 US dollars to 75 US dollars. Uh, we have also observed a slight depreciation of the Namibian dollar against the US dollar. Uh, so these are the factors that contributed to the level of the under recovery that we, we are currently having. Business on one took to Karatura and spoke to motorists. Taxi operators were not so happy with the increase. I we are just coming now, they are out of uh, what? What do you call this? Lockdown. Lockdown. We are just loading three people, and yet now they are telling us the increase of the fuel again. So, I, I really don't understand this situation anymore. Yeah, because, like me myself, I only used to make money through this taxi. I, I'm, not, I'm even failing to, to send my kids to school so, and to bring the blood in, in the house. So, Ah, it's a really, really something bad. I'm sitting on the transport and I'm going to have a car. 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 I'm going to have a car.
Thank you for watching. Join me again next time and don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. Stay true to who you are and stay true to Namibia Sounds. Starting September 4th at 7 p.m., Valentine's and 99FM bring you the True Music Sessions, a back-to-back -back playlist of our nation's finest artists brought to you by the finest blended scotch whiskey, Valentine's. Stay true. There's no wrong way. Now a look at Comments Corner, your daily dose of comments from our social media pages. Four new satellite GPS telemetry were fitted on giraffes in Itosha National Park and a Hirovipuka Communal Conservancy recently. This was done by the Namibia University of Science and Technology NAST Biodiversity Research Center in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism the Giraffe Conservation Foundation, and the University of Namibia School of Veterinary Medicine. The device provides information on the feeding requirements and preferences of animals and identifies obstacles to migration and possible sites of human-wildlife conflict. Makrita says putting CCTV on giraffe horns is a good idea for anti-poaching. Joseph says he does not think that the giraffe is comfortable. Hishua wants to know how long the animals have to carry the device around. Ndeshi hopes that predators won't chew it off during hunting time. Natal noted that motion detected cameras should be used instead. Gabriel wants to know if the device won't fall off if they get into a fight. While Epson wants to know how this will benefit the animal. And that's all from Comments Corner. Be sure to post your comments on our social media pages for broadcast every day only on Today on One. Castro Lumbu is up next with today's sports update. Welcome and thank you for joining me, Castro Ulumbo, for this evening's edition of Sports on One. After a successful debut at the world stage in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games and the recently concluded World Under-20 Championships that were held in Nairobi, Kenya, Namibian teenage sprinters Christine Boma and Pietres Masilingi with their coach and mentor Hank Botta are heading for Europe to conclude their successful season. Today on One Sports has more on this story. Just one week after concluding the Under-20 World Championships in Nairobi, Kenya, teenage sensations Christine Boma and Pietres Masilingi are yet again on the road as they look to compete in Europe at the Wanda Diamond League Series. Coach Hank Bota updated today on One Sports on this new schedule for the athletes before concluding their 2021 season. The girls are doing well. They are a bit tired after the long and hectic schedule. Unfortunately, we need to leave today again. The, the schedule start again. So on Friday the 3rd, there will be an event in Brussels. It's a Diamond League uh, event. And after that, um, we will then uh, go for Zurich, which will be the Diamond League final. There will only Christine take part. In Brussels, it's Christine and Petrus in the 200. And then from there, on the 11th, uh, we will go to Croatia, where both girls will run the 200 as well. 
On our return to Namibia, we'll have a couple of days and then we will go again to Kenya and we will have an event in Kenya, Nairobi, where we'll do the last event of the season, which is a global tour event and it's a golden tour uh, event as well. And the girls both will do the 200 there as well. And as soon as we are finished there, they will have a total month off and we will make sure they rest, not too much press and all these things. And then after that, we will start to prepare with the off-season program for next year. We are here at the Sia Kutaka International Airport, uh, ready to depart for Johannesburg, then Dubai, then Belgium. Uh, both girls will be taking part in the Diamond League events. The Diamond League is an uh, uh, invitation-only event, and we are very proud to have two Namibians there. That means that World Athletics know about them, and uh, they are on the books, and uh, these girls will be then part of the top eight athletes uh, in the world to take part in the Diamond League. And then in Zurich, Christine will take part in the final, which will be also excited. Uh, we'll keep you up to date and thank you for all your support. Christine Boma and Beatrice Masilingi showed the world that they are forced to be reckoned with when they bravely brought out their best at Tokyo in the 200 meter final track race event at the Olympic Stadium in Japan. The lineup, which included the fastest and second fastest women in the world, Elaine Thompson, Hera, and Shelley and Fraser Price from Jamaica, Ivory Coast sprinting champion Marita Lu, and the United States of America's 24 year old 200 meter sprinting sensation Gabriella Thomas. The Namibian teenage golden girl Christine Boma rose to the occasion on the day when she managed to scoop second place after Elaine Thompson to win the silver medal, which became Namibia's first Olympic track race event medal since Frankie Fred in 1996 at the Atlanta Games. Country mate Beatrice Masilingi also recorded a new personal best in the 200 meter event with a time of 22.28 seconds, beating her 22.67 seconds record she set earlier this year in Switzerland as she finished sixth in the star studded 200 meter final lineup. And that is all we have for you tonight. Join us again next time for Sports on One and don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. Thank you, Castro, for that update. Now we look at the weather forecast. A look at the weather forecast. The Namibia interior is sunny and warm in the Taras and Commerce regions. Elsewhere, sunny and hot. The coast, partly cloudy and mild to warm. Other wind light to fresh southwesterly. Now we look at minimum and maximum temperatures across the country and beyond. And that's all we have for you. Do join us again for a repeat at 9.30 this evening and the Omnibus Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. From me, Isai Sipunga, and the rest of the team. Till next time, good night. The International University of Management, a Namibian university dedicated to its people's future, a hub of abundant opportunities. We are IUM for life. We are IUM. souls this is Nikita Winkler and I am here to share easy tools for stretching that you can do just about anywhere this is a demonstration 
So what's most important is that you take the time in each position that your body needs to release its tension. In this session, we will stretch the hips. What you'll need are yoga blocks or books, thick books or pillows, especially if you have tight hips. You can do this on a mat, on the floor, on a blanket, or even in your bed. Let's get started. So we're going to start on the floor with the soles of our feet together. I'm going to grab around the feet. This is a butterfly position. So in order to warm up the hips, I'm just going to flap the butterfly wings. And again, take your time. I'm going to lean forward. And here, again, if the hips are too tight, you can place your blocks, books or pillows underneath. You might even feel a stretch in the back here. From this position, I'm going to take one arm right behind me, not too far from my body. The other arm, inhale, exhale, press the hip open. And come back to center. Change. One arm right behind me to lengthen the spine, the other hand on the knee. Inhale, exhale, press the hip open and back to center. Now we're going to lie down on the floor. And first, before I get started, I have to make sure that my body, my spine is in alignment. I'm going to just open up the neck area. And you can spend as much time as you need here, allowing the force of gravity to weigh on the legs to open up the hips. You can place your blocks, books, or pillows underneath the knees. And gradually, you can take the feet even further down and spend enough time in each position. From here, we're going to go into an internal hip rotation. I'm going to spread my feet to the side, lean the knees inwards. If you have a little bit more flexibility, you don't really feel the stretch, just take your feet even further apart to deepen this internal rotation stretch in your hips. From here, I'm just going to place my feet and without repositioning the feet, I'm going to take my arms to the side and then I'm just going to rock my legs side to side. Keeping the upper body facing up, shoulders down. And then I'm going to stop on one side, take the lower leg over the upper to add weight to deepen the stretch. Release the leg and switch. Other side, lower over the upper. And back to center. Last part, I'm going to spread my legs as wide open as I can. And I'm going to just row the boat. So what's important here is that the knees don't lift off the floor. Make sure you row both sides. Keep the knees and both bum cheeks on the floor. Alternatively, you can just lean forward. You can hang out on the pillow. Take your time on the blocks or on your books. And that is it. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to breathe into your stretches and happy stretching. I like rhinos. I like them very much. The uh, future here in this area is depending on the tourism. 
the inside generation they can see and they can benefit from their own resources. Animals like rhinos, elephants, the big five, you benefit from them and it must be respected. You are not feeding the rhinos, you are not giving them order, so it's a free business. <laughs> I think two of my sons, which was a little bit five years old, they were young guys. So they asked me questions. Why are we here? Why are we sleeping here? I told them this is our resources and this is our future. My first memory of going with my dad is that I learned new things. As I grow up as a man, I see an opportunity in it. So I decided to look for a job pertaining to tourism. So that's when I was employed at Palamba. So I decided to go for tour guide studies. Because I grew up with the tourism industry, the wildlife, the rhinos and everything, to bring that experience to the tourists. You can see the hyena. The biggest change is I was employed, getting paid, and also I can now support my family. It's a cultural thing. It's coming a long way. Even if you go to area like Trevofontein area was a lot of paintings. You will see rhino engravings on the rocks. That is an indication that the interaction between human, especially the local communities and wildlife, is dating back. That intimacy relationship is coming for a long time. Uh, we are right here now at Palambach, and Palambach is one of the big lodges in the heart of the desert. And as you can see there, um, there is Yumbo standing behind me, which shows it's really a tourist area. We do have elephants, lions, but as you can see, the desert is the heart of the rhinos. This is the main breeding area of the rhinos, is what we found here in this desert. It's the largest free Roman population of black rhinos uh, that you find outside national parks in the world. It's a population that communities in the Northwest have taken responsibility themselves in managing this population with the structures that government has put in place, more specifically the establishment of conservancies. These people, before independence, they took it upon themselves and decided that wildlife is our heritage and through history we've been living with wildlife and having wildlife in your area is like having a garden. Because of all these animals, we've got the communities that benefit from all this wildlife. And it's, it's like a triangle that fits into each other. And the communities looked after the wildlife, the wildlife doing their own thing, and the communities benefit. So already there were this intergenerational relationship between mankind and wildlife, and that bond is what our people actually wanted to see continuing. 
very few countries have the wildlife that Namibia has. What is also important is the policies that Namibia has put in place, which also involves communities to be engaged in the management of the wildlife species and also to benefit from the wildlife resources. Turn conservation into a rural economy, turn conservation into endless opportunities that would actually cater for those young people that have nothing else to do. If it was not for an economy and tourism in this area, it was really difficult for young people to get or find a job. We are conservation engineers. We make conservation work in an unfenced area, and through it, we want to turn the wildlife into the rural economy that will benefit the rural communities. So, we can see now wildlife is doing very well, the lobsters are doing well, and the community is also benefiting. So it takes all three together. Devastating hit over coronavirus fears. Airline industry is facing its biggest threat to travel since 9-11. Since March, when COVID-19 hit Namibia, things actually become very difficult. In the first place, all the lodges has closed down because of COVID-19. With us, say the Rhino Trust, we had some donors cutting on their funding. And then we had, in the same time, a poaching case of two rhinos that was poaching. We had less boots on the ground, and poachers could actually see. Now it's our change to go in and do something. So COVID-19 was tough on all of us. Ginger Morning, who is one of our trustees, actually came up with the idea of why don't we ask you to go to buy some gold for us and make gold bars. And then we sell them for the rhino conservation. I was fortunate enough to um, have a chance to have lunch with Clive Johnson, the CEO of B2 Gold in Vancouver, Canada. And I looked at Clive and I said, you know, we've got rhinos, you've got gold, let's do something. Let's create a coin or a medallion or a bar using your resource to create a sustainable source of funding for rhino conservation for the future. There was it. The gold was bought, the bar was made, and I think it was January, 31st of January, that we launched the bars in, in Winduk. And suddenly one morning I had an email from my office, from my finance person, saying, these people don't have salaries. So I said, oh, what now? So I pick up my phone and I told Mark, no. I said, Mark, I have got this problem. He said, but when we've got the fund already ready for you, you just have to apply, put a proposal in. Thousands of ounces of gold can make an enormous difference to the livelihoods of the communities that live up there. We are, in essence, providing income and providing a livelihood to the communities. In the absence of tourism, especially now with COVID-19, even prior to that, when we had such a bad drought, the communities became even more dependent on the natural economy. The idea is to make this a fund that will last for the next 25, 30 years, or even longer. And a portion of that will be distributed immediately as needed. And in this case, the COVID-19 crisis necessitated us to distribute funds to pay salaries to our people in the field. The proceeds of the sales from the gold bars will be going towards responsible NGOs. And we've identified Save the Rhino Trust as the, uh, the key NGO. And IRDNC, one of the first organizations that was in the Northwest, integrated rural development and nature conservation, so that ultimately the funds go to the communities and various aspects of their war on poaching. To be able to support those hardworking men and women that are always in the front line uh, between the poachers and the rhinos. If it was not for Little Gold and the Golden Bars, I think by now we should have been in big trouble. By Extracting the gold, you reinvest it in other renewable uh, resources. The gold that's coming out from the ground is actually protecting the wildlife that's working on the ground, which, which is a very good sample for the others. I wish this was my bar. <laughs> this is the 500 gram gold bar. Um, so you'll see on, on this side, you've got the Etindeka Mountains and you've got the mother rhino with her calf. And then on the reverse side, we've got the serial number. You've got the RAND refinery stamp, which is very important. Anywhere in the world, people will recognize the stamp and they will know 
that this bath contains 99.99% gold. It is gorgeous. We wanted to make a biggest contribution. And at Balawad, we see, we see that as a way of giving back to the community. Okay, so there you'll see the, the 500 gram bar. Very special. Feel the, feel the weight. It's, it's incredible. This opportunity which presented itself is, is absolutely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We are privileged to have this. This is just absolutely gorgeous and I think this showcase really what the project is all about. It's from 24 karat Namibian gold. I'm looking at this uh, rhinos is put there like um, Miss World Photogenic, I would say. There are only 1,000 of these gold bars, rhino gold bars, in circulation. As far as I'm aware, it's the largest single donation of any corporate to the conservation of biodiversity anywhere in Africa. Therefore, we so much appreciate and would want to continue as a government to work with B2 Gold. And the fact that it's happening here in Namibia is uh, something that we can all be extremely proud about and very grateful to be to gold. Thanks to having this literal pot of gold through the funding for the Rhino Gold Bar, we're able to step in now and make sure that those trackers are supported and so are their families and their communities. We make sure that people sustain their jobs going forward um, and who doesn't want gold? And the Beta Gold Rhino Gold Bar has come in at a really critical time now, particularly with tourism um, being closed off and those forms of revenue not coming in. To say we have the biggest rhino population or black rhino population in the world, let it be uh, for the rest of our lives. And it's that heritage that we have, it's, it's, it's our resource that we can all look after and protect. It's our heritage. And, and, and it's also good that other people like Peter Gold are also seeing it that way. It's actually a very nice link between the investor that buys this gold bar, the rhino tracker in the northwest of Namibia, and the black rhinos. It's an intergenerational thing. The rhino trackers teach their children how to track rhinos, their children get taught, and so it flows down. This is something that I want my children to have and that we leave a little bit of a, of a B2 Gold legacy. Um, and if I can be part of that as part of my family, I'd be very proud. It can also become an inheritance for the generations of my own clan. My children, my grandchildren. If we can bring that passion over to future generations and to hand that over to my children um, and I hope that that same passion for conservation gets migrated over to my kids. And what we've done together is create a sustainable source of funding that should outlive all of us. You know, I think as far as Peter Gold is concerned, we couldn't have chosen a better target in which to put our efforts as far as the environmental and conservation pillar is concerned. And I want to stress there that the money that's going towards environment and conservation is actually going towards the people. What I know is for all of us, whether you are in Canada, whether you are in Vancouver, whether you are in the US, if you really want to see conservation at play with rural communities, I therefore humbly request each and every one to join us on our Rhino tour and have a wonderful experience. This is what keeps rhinos on this planet. I've done rhino trekking experience. It was just amazing walking in that landscape of the Kunene. And as we followed them, we could now find rhinos with the calf. We got the closest distance we could. It's a warning sign. And it was just amazing and lovely. Something to experience that Namibia can offer. something that uh, you have to do in your life.
Sorry. 